This Big Ten East preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Circa Sports. They're back with their Circa Survivor and Circa Millions contest. $14 million up for grabs. Get all the details over at CircaSports.com. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circa Las Vegas. You're listening to FGPN. Let it ride. of the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean second, the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer. Uh, so we moved from the civilized lands out West of the pac 12 into the civilized lands of the North. <laughs> we'll be playing football. Remember I, you, I was going back in time, Sean. I yep. know we have a guest. He's sitting right next to me, but Colby, uh, Colby is li- a guest. Listening to some of the some of the stuff that transpired during the COVID year. <laughs> uh, re- I mean, old old ta- ta- tag him on Twitter because they Big Ten. Oh, what, Big what, Ten. What, what, what do we give them as a grade in Try, hindsight? Big Maybe, wet blanket F trying plus. to cancel yeah. football. F plus. Yep, uh, they were terrible. And then the Pac-12 was just like sitting there, going, with, listening to whatever they said. Meanwhile, they're going to steal like two of their teams in a year or two. Just complete. That's a good point. All and that's, and yeah. that's why they're dedicating the um, 2023 season to all the college football athletes who died during those seasons and they have a giant oh, mass. Yeah. Oh wait. Very. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, the table table needs yeah, it's still not, not little big red, enough at this little table. red hot over here, but um, everyone was fine uh, that played college football and they continue to be fine. Looking forward to the 2023 <laughs> season. Yeah. Now I was and Nick Rolovich still should be rehired any day now. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. <laughs> people lost their minds. Uh, during COVID, we did. What did we end up getting from the Big Ten for football? Uh, five five games. games, and the, and and then you saw how crooked the system was. It was, was like, mean, you know, Ohio State deserves to be in, and you're just like, wait, they played five games. This other team sitting there at like ten and two. Well, and <laughs> and, and clearly you kind of saw through their bullshit. It's like, oh, if you get COVID, you're gonna be dead and blah blah blah. And then the, those people settled on five games. Like, come yeah. on, you can't say Gavin, Gavin Newsom's like at a dinner with like five thousand people. Just I will laugh, say, laughing I, at these I, poor I had people. a moment as uh, like a parent, and I'm coaching this team, and they're sending out this memo. Or so actually, this was out of field. A coach was basically protesting, saying that the rule technically says we have to wear masks while playing, and it's oh like. Well, what are we doing? Oh, if it's Holy that, Cross basketball, well, right? But they, it's, they, like, <laughs> it's like, all right, like, uh, like uh, if it's this important, well, well, let's not have our kids run yeah. around with masks. On. And that's, then, that's and then, ridiculous. if you if you look deeper into that, you know, you then you go deeper into the CTE anyway, stuff. So, and, and wow, I mean, it's just a lot of a lot of bogus uh, stuff. And out Colby there. managing to crowbar in the fact that CTE truce out there with brain yeah. injuries. I, I'll yeah. say this: We got to get RFK Junior on to talk. See, let CTE. me let me help. There's a lot of bullshit out there. Yeah. I, you, if you want, I would Although say this. you could argue his uncle, the ultimate uh, CT. Can we get a? If we could get one of those data visual, I'm Irish. I can say that. Yeah. If we if we can get one of those data visualization guys from Reddit mm. to to overlay uh, CTE and opiate use. Amongst oh, that, I told you, I already got this figured that, I know, out. I know you got, but we you look at the 40 it. time of Jim Thorpe. You look at the 40 time of the guys well, now what? and you're like, the, 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 the game's not faster. It's not faster. Maybe the field conditions. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. tra- track and people have gotten fast. <laughs> Jim Dude. Thorpe was an outlier. Colby. No, people John have Riggins, class, go look at, faster. go look at, go look at the, no, not really, dude. Believe it or not, not really. But we yeah. we, we like objectively through now, the, the measurement have of helped <laughs> but, speed. But but speed. All right. So equipment, training, health practices have all allowed us to conti- consistently break land-based speed records by human human foot. What? Like people run faster than they did back yeah, then. Yeah, of course. Uh, not in the National Football League. Oh, okay. We, uh, we just look <laughs> at the just look at the mile time records or the Olympic times. Yeah, well, he's saying that he, that's not yeah. that's not National Football League. Yeah. But that would apply. When you put a helmet on, you put on all that shit. 
You know what I mean? You're gonna be running the so, same. So the theory, okay. the theory is that if the 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 elite, if the best of the best continually get faster, then the bulk of the the distribution should also move with it, thus allowing the elite athlete to maintain a place where they're consistently getting faster over time due to advancements in uh, health science. I'm with you, Colby. Equipment. I I I think the the way you fix the seat, you know, the way you make the game safer is by oh, wow. the equipment, not by changing the rules. The way you take make, the face mask off. <laughs> no, I dare you, you to the take the face mask off. Doesn't need. There was never a problem. You I, know mean, what I mean, again, like, that's also I guess the there was. I'm yeah. fine with the the appeal of football is that it is dangerous and I'm fine with consenting adults Life taking part dangerous. in dangerous if activities. If you do nothing, it's dangerous. Yeah. And, and I think much like most uh, items in our uh, in life, the people, most people, we're have, pro football and Colby's mad. Most at people, us. I don't have, know that you guys are. You guys didn't want to do the CUSA preview. I, th I, think, right? I think most, yeah, most most people, uh, most football players would probably say they do it all over again. And the and, and the vast majority who are the loud or the minority who are loud, uh, obviously taking over the, the the narrative. But yeah, I mean, I, I who who gives a shit? Like to your point. Although I will say they they did put the face mask in to pre prevent the the their athletes from being mangled, so they yeah. were more marketable. Well, they didn't have a dental plan, insurance but it was. wasn't yeah. to enhance the sport. Right. It was right. to make sure they <laughs> stayed you guys, pretty. You guys are. It's like you're. There's some sort of debate or uh, argument in there, but there's no debating that circus sports is the place to go when you're signing up for football contests this summer. Oh, listen to those trumpets blast. Listen to the National Football League. Awesome. So many ways to win over at Circus Sports. Love uh, signing up over at Circus Sports for the Circuit Millions and the Circus Survivor. First off, $14 million up for grabs. Kramer, we've had over the years, we've had, I mean, I can think of a couple of years in particular where it's like, oh my, 62% against the spread. And imagine you waste that in your, your office pool where you win like 100 bucks a week. Again, this could be the year for you to cash millions of dollars. At the very least, it's super fun. Uh, they even have quarterly prizes for the circuit millions. Or if you're a complete disaster, they have the booby prize. Unfortunately, we were in the mix for the booby prize one year. Circus Survivor, also super fun. Uh, if you get knocked out the first week, I think they give you a. Uh, I think you get like a free couple nights over at the circa. I know we, we qualified never cashed, for that. We didn't cash in on it, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and I think the most important thing is, I highly recommend you you head out to Vegas for the sign up weekend. Yes. A because we will pick your picks for week one, but yep. also because you can see you will physically get to see Derek sweating mm. the massive overlay. Yes, because <laughs> uh, as it counts down, the eight million for the survivor and the six million for the millions are guaranteed. So if there's only do the math, if there's only twenty entries, uh, you're you're looking pretty good. Uh, we'll see what they close <laughs> out. But Derek's Derek, gonna get sweaty in that suit. <laughs> yeah, especially as he as you count down. And again, last weekend in August, we're gonna be out there hanging out. Encourage everyone. Perfect weekend to come out. Sign up for. The the contest, get all your future bets in. Hit the pool. Hit the pool. Stadium swim. Cole, will Cole, will Cole be have an appearance by the pool? <laughs> uh, no, week zero is going on, guys. Oh, Cole, I Cole will is... not be with you guys that week. <laughs> all right. Enter in Vegas. Play from anywhere. CircusSports.com for all the details. It was a it was a point of contention, Ryan, when we were trying to go to. Uh, what was it like the opening uh, UCLA game? We're like, oh, yeah. they play LSU. Yeah. It's gonna be great. Or we'll set up a tailgate. Yeah. Uh, that was a legendary night. Colby ended up getting um, yep. asked to leave, not ejected. <laughs> uh, but Colby was. I mean, it started. He was way kind of worried that. about the the plan in general. He's like. Well, if we go to that game, then we can only watch that game. Like he yeah. was, he was real worried. Yeah, about it. I mean, Clemson was playing Georgia. I'm kind of with. Game. Th there is an element to Colby's <laughs> angle there that make me. It's the same reason I would prefer to not watch an NFL game live at the 1 p.m. East I, Coast I do, window. If you I do like have being a, in front of God's eye for that. Yeah, but yeah. if you do have a team, yeah. you got to go to a, a couple games yeah. a season Prime in NFL. Time. And yeah. in Prime college, time. I'm. I'm with Colby. I love the experience of college football, even at the Rose Bowl, if it's for big games. Like going to that Rose Bowl, the actual Rose Bowl for the Rose Bowl was an all time great football 
uh, event. Okay. Wow. And, and that, now, and and next year, into... that'll be the Big Ten. That'll be the Big yeah. Ten's home games. You awesome. Know, or, or, I'd love to yeah. see Penn State UCLA yeah. at the Rose Bowl. You'll I be able to go every to year. Big Ten games. And Col- Maybe they'll let Colby back in now that Will Wade has I mean, faced I, his crime. And no, 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 no. I'm there, watching There's God's two eye. things that can be true. Like, I think it's stupid they're leaving the Pac 12, but selfishly, we are so close to the Rose Bowl. I. I mean, there's going to be massive games there, so in that sense, I'm I'm fine. So yeah, I mean, True. if I if I was, I mean, I again the, the no, whole conference realignment silly, but yeah, but for yeah. someone who lives near the Rose Bowl, it's cool. Yeah, and you know, just pencil it in now for the Canva next year. Oh. Miles traveled for UCLA and USC. We got to uh, get that out first. I like that. We got to do it for like the small. Uh, I like that small sports as well. Well, I, they're they're gonna figure. They're, what they're gonna do is they're gonna leave. The, the conference eventually, or the money won't ma- make it matter. We should we should talk college. Uh, yeah, football let's at talk this Indiana morning. football. Let's go. Uh, I know you're <laughs> you're you're just pumped up to talk about some of these real bottom dwellers here. We're in the east. I mean, I not Indiana, but uh, Rutgers. Uh, some you could argue that this now not by win total average. I I will by the time we finish this, I will have uh, one adjusted for juice, but they're they're not that far off the SEC West. What really sets them apart is they have some teams. Their teams at the bottom are a little bit closer to the overall bottom than the SEC West. Indiana's three and a half, minus one seventy five though on the over, plus one forty five to the under. A whopping one hundred to one just to win their division. Three hundred to one for the conference. Didn't even dangle odds for Indiana, a basketball Sad. school, to make the playoff, and they are five hundred to one to win the Natty. Um, look. If the Big Ten is getting two teams in, it's not going to be. It's certainly not going to be Indiana. So I, I think I'd re- much rather bet the conference odds than the national championship odds if I was going that route. <laughs> that being said, I mean Indiana's right up there with. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Colby, but they've been getting decimated by the portal as well, right? Oh, just yeah, and well, not yeah. that like they had a ton to begin with. Yeah, uh, obviously Michael Penix, but they, <laughs> I think that was mutual in a way. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean. They they have their issues. I personally think this job will be open in a year. Yeah, I have I have all my notes. Tom Allen hot seat six and eighteen last two seasons. But again, if you're Indiana, if you're an, if you're an alumni looking to pump money, are you really gonna do it for the football team? Like this, I don't know. This feels they're a basketball school, right? Now you got an NBA uh, coach they, now. They got that. It's almost like watching those SEC schools that have been able to benefit off Kentucky. of that off of that yeah. SEC money. Now that the Big Ten is going to have such a, a money, dis- you know, they, like Indiana, the whole state loves football. So you got Notre Dame there, so it's like you should be good. You border yeah. football states, you know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> recruiting, no, they should be a lot better. I've always said that ever since you know they they really haven't been great over the you know the what what, of is, what is Indiana going to do at quarterback? Uh, they got a Tennessee transfer, uh, Jackson, that's coming in. Uh, that's that's I think who they have penciled mm. in, but uh, that's not good. Um, yeah, the Connor Bazelak's gone, but that's almost addition by subtraction. Jack Tuttle's gone. Leading receiver Cam Caper coming off a torn ACL. Yeah, I mean, look, it's like if you're an Indiana football fan, what do you? Where's the bright spots? What are they getting excited about? The, a new coach. Yeah, um, next but, year. Uh, so not no, this year. Well, that's what I find. It, <laughs> Sure. If a best case scenario, you can end up like in, in the, you know, in the, what what is the new, the hot pocket bowl, but, right. uh, but you know, I they, see, I see some serious issues in their schedule. They just don't, and I don't not understand good. why I don't know. I, I just don't understand what they're doing. I don't understand what Tom Allen's doing. It feels like a transition year. Tell him to go back to T. Is Tom Allen the guy that showed Pamela Anderson his dick, or is that wow? Or was that, Allen. Was that, that was Tim Allen. Tim, Tim, Allen. Tim Allen showed. Yeah. Uh, Tim yeah. Allen took his dick out for Pamela. Supposedly, Anderson. Apparently, in the middle really? of, a, of a Home Depot episode, a guy back in the day, Home like, Depot. I will say there was a right. lot more dicks being pulled out yeah. before cell phones. Yeah. It just and now now they're all urban legends. Like, well, no, not hear, really. Hear about the time that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, well, yeah. also g- crazy move by Tim Allen. I mean, uh, we've <laughs> seen the video with Tommy Lee. Yeah. I mean, what is yeah. Tim yeah. Allen? Yeah. What kind of wrench yeah. is he now? Made? If it was Al Borland, I understand it. <laughs> yeah, I, are you really gonna impress? <laughs> Got that plaid shirt and that fucking beard. I mean, you look at Pam Anderson's yeah. resume. Are you really gonna yeah. come in and say, go? 
<laughs> you expect Pam that, Anderson that to be like, been, that, wow, what a dick. That might have been pre Tommy Lee, though. So uh, he well, might we'll have, have been to do th- the looking for that opportunity. Pam Anderson is a um, seasoned veteran, I would say. As Big far football. As she got discovered at a football game. Yeah, CFL. Not. So uh, shout out to see the CFL's been doing his favors for a long time. <laughs> so that's the best <laughs> thing that ever happened to the CFL. <laughs> we got Joe Theismann from the CFL, and we got uh, Pam Anderson from the CFL. Uh, now, now neither of them are going to be playing for the Indiana Hoosiers this year. No. Um, uh, guys, I'm on the under. I I, right, I think wow. this is the, the risky right the thing. Game. This is the risky thing about taking the over here. The coach could get fired at any time, and you w- got to worry about yep. the team quitting. And so, last year, wh- they 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 started hot, and they just lost a lot of games in a row. And so it kind of feels like the vibe of we're gonna have uh, if things go bad, we're gonna have that like interim coach thing. Maybe we get a little bump somewhere in the middle of the season randomly because like the strength and conditioning coach takes over the the job for the rest of the season. But yeah, yeah, it, it, I I just don't think. I mean. It's three and a half, you said, right? Mm-hmm. Minus one seventy five on the over. Let's go through I the mean, schedule. I mean, the fact that you're getting plus one forty five oh. on the under on this team. Ohio State to open the year at home, which is just win. I well, think they're I think they're twenty eight point dogs. But some I, I I was dog. So you know, highly unlikely they they have any sort of trouble there. Then then we move over to Indiana State. Oh, I love the little. Love the little the uh, regional matchup. Don't here. overlook the Sycamores. Do they have a what? What, are, what do they have a realistic shot there, Colby? Or no, they're not very yeah, good. Yeah, I was going to say I so didn't think they were going to very. Indiana good. will win that one, but it's so it is a have, rivalry game. It they, is a little brother. Then you have a neutral site uh, in the disgusting. This, Lucas this Royal game, Stadium. whoever decided, like whoever's in charge of the Kevin Warren or whoever's making these calls, they did this with the Michigan State game that we'll get to. This game is disgusting because these are two. <laughs> the, you know what I mean? Like they just completely ruined any appeal to this game. Uh, so because they're playing it in the. Why yes. would they play a random Saturday? <laughs> yes, Indiana versus Louisville in because the Big Oil. Ten has a big contract with yeah. the state, the Lucas Oil Stadium. Terrible, they play their championship and they should move game their there. championship game out oh, of there. Could, uh, well, there's other games to feature. This is like the Chick Fil A game with the SEC. It just happens every year. Just I, terrible. It, just, it, it, just it is terrible. what it is. Then they have Akron, the Zips, who are not, you know, they're not the the good part what, of match. What do you think the uh, what do you think the zip spread would be? Oh, uh, a lot. Yeah, I would guess like probably Indiana. 21? Indiana is to the 18? Big Ten as Akron is to the match. I so. think Akron was getting better as the season went along, and, yeah. and to me, I would not really. Like, you Indiana this almost. One. I know. I know. There's a big gap You're between this between one. Western Kentucky and Akron. But Western Kentucky should have beat Indiana at Indiana last year. Went to that's, yeah, that's a different yeah. different caliber. At Maryland, and then into the bye week. So look, they 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 very well two wins could get away with. They should have two wins. Oh, at least two wins. No, they, they're they, not going to beat Maryland. They could beat Louisville. No, they they. I'm they, high on Louisville, dude. I like Louisville too. I'm just saying yeah. in terms of winnable games, that's a that's a sneaky. Well, home. Indiana State and Akron, right? Yeah, yeah. That, those are the two. So then you got uh, at. At Michigan, Rutgers homecoming at that, Penn State. I think that's the one you circle the Rutgers game. Wisconsin at Illinois, which I did they they beat Illinois last year, if I'm not mistaken. So a little revenge on the mind, yeah, to open the year. Uh, yeah. Will oh, they be will they wild, be favored yeah. against Rutgers? Uh, I think Rutgers is in a little better spot roster. I like I, I'm definitely higher in Rutgers, but I just want to like I think that could be the game that gets them fired. He loses that he game. Loses the Rutgers, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, oh, if he if he makes it that long, I mean that that will be impressive. Why not fire him into the bye week? I never understood. Guy, you always got to fire a bye week coming up. Great time to reorganize. Get him ready for Michigan. Uh, at, so at Penn State, <laughs> Wisconsin, at Illinois, uh, Michigan, Michigan State, and at Purdue. Of course, I mean, the, the, we remember the Michigan State game from last year, they, double overtime yeah, thriller they that they won. Upset. Michigan State or something or Illinois, but yeah, they can shock yeah. the world. Revenge though, another revenge. Spot. I'm on the under. Yeah, I think even if you're giving Rutgers a win there, you got them at three, and then I understand why the price is minus one seventy five. You can see the path to four is there, right? Yeah, of course, but it does. But I'll take yeah. the plus odds at plus one forty five, especially, especially knowing you could get fired at any of these times. Like, that's, yeah, because then yeah. you might get that bounce back game. If you're on, yeah, exactly. That, you're, that ends up swinging. If you like them, you're saying, well, Michigan State, Rutgers, Akron, Indiana State, all winnable games. That's what you're telling yourself. But to your point, Colby, if he does get fired, 
that Michigan State game goes yeah. out the window. The the Rutgers game is probably to yeah. to Sean's point probably going to be near pick 'em. So I don't feel great about it. Bad feel football. Great bad football yeah. team played uh, in Bloomington right now. Uh, Rutgers, another team with a three and a half win total, minus one fifty on the over, plus one twenty five to the under. One same one hundred to one again to win the division. Two hundred to one to win the div- uh, conference for Rutgers and five hundred for the Natty. Rutgers is. Three and a half's the win total. Greg Chicken Salad Shiano oh, takes wow. the chicken shit and he makes the chicken salad. I don't want, I don't want any of that. Chicken Eight salad. starters back on defense. Underrated front seven. They play ugly football, as some would call it. I like mm. it. I like it. It's defensive minded. They don't give a fuck about offense. I actually. They did bring in Kirk. Uh, Soraka, mm, nice. who was yeah. a play caller, good QB developer. Got kind of didn't get maybe the best shake there at Penn State, but I think. The the offense can't get worse. There's a decent chance it gets better, and the defense should be very good. You look at their schedule. I mean, I think four games is the floor for this Rutgers team, uh, with like six games being the ceiling, maybe even seven. Certainly surprised to see le- less juice on Rutgers than in. I love the over on Rutgers. Well, uh, and on the, another thing is Wimsat was a freshman last year, a quarterback, so y- he's gonna get. More experience here. You yeah. should be better. Um, I, the schedule's nice. The schedule's what actually a not nice. nicer for for them being in the Big Ten East, where you're just normally like, man, they three home games to start out. I'll say this: they got to get it done before their bye week, or they might not get there. Okay, that's fair. So they w- we're talking about what you're yeah, saying brutal is after the bye week. At, at the bye week, you think they're going to be four and four? Yeah. I think they could. if they're maybe four, even more. If they're four and I four, think they, I think they could. You're excited. I think they can. I, I think I, that might be a fifth. My boy uh, Phil Steele. Now that I got access to the Steele dossier, he said nice. dark horse to to make the uh, Rutgers to go bowling, and I kind of co-signed that. We walk. We'll walk through the schedule, but again, I think that defense is going to keep them in some games. Shiano, yeah, again, not a great offensive mind. Very. Very limited, I guess, talent wise compared to what there's in the conference. But I, I think they're going to be hanging around in a lot of games. They, and, and this could be a great them getting out of the East next year is huge. They should be patient with Shiano yeah. because uh, I, I look, and this could be a nice, you know, start to that uh, if they if they can get to a bowl here. Well, and I, you know, I think they're going to have to start fast. They don't have, they can't trip on any of the win of the the obvious wins. They open with Northwestern nationally televised Sunday. Yeah, uh, let's walk Labor through. Day, yeah, which, in some ways, this is a great team to open with. And others, I, I don't like that they're opening up with a conference foe. No, I think you do like it if you're if you're if you're Shiano. You're saying this is an opportunity for us to steal a win. Uh, you know, later in the year, I feel like when you're going through the gauntlet, you know, I think you're more likely to lose to a Northwestern. Then you then you get Temple, which. What how's Temple looking this year? EJ Warner, Kurt Warner's son, firing that laser around. That that I mean Is he also bagging groceries <laughs> part time on the side? Hey, this is how you get to the NFL, yeah, son. You're not gonna get to the NFL fucking playing college football. <laughs> Temple was better than I thought they would be last year. Temple but- well, I'll say this. I mean, I think they oh. win these uh first two, but don't overlook the owls because this is like Temple versus Rutgers. There's a lot of guys who probably Ended up at Temple, but got passed over by Rutgers. Like, they, yeah, this is a. I think little brother. Angle. I think they could have a, a regional chip they're, on their shoulder for this game. They'll be favored. So uh, five and a half is the number for Northwestern. They'll be favored over Temple. Then they have Virginia Tech at home. Love Wait, it. Northwestern's lay in the five and a half. Yeah. No, Rutgers. Rutgers oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rutgers yeah okay. Okay. Then they have the Hokies. Win. Which. Uh, again, uh, we Colby and I were discussing my Hokies. Oh. They are bringing in some bigger prospects now. I do have questions about the coaching, game, man. For Rutgers, this is for, huge. Th- this is yeah. probably if you're betting on the Rutgers over, this is probably for, the game. Even for the bowl game, like if you get this win, I yeah. can see a path to a well, bowl game. Because if you get this win, you're three and zero. Oh. Yep. Yeah, and you have and Wagner, you still. Momentum. and you have Wagner still. And, and coming Wagner, up, so. folks, if you don't know FCS football, they're one of the worst. <laughs> uh, last year, Rutgers, not a team known for their offense, put up sixty-six points against Wagner. So they have <laughs> at Michigan, uh, then Wagner, then at Wisconsin. They then, should rest their starters against Michigan. Then homecoming with Michigan State and at Indiana, who 
Indiana they beat last I think, year. So, again, like, you know, we I just think, talked about it. I think Indiana maybe you could sneak one. Michigan uh, State you might be able Michigan to. Michigan State. Yeah. I mean, again, if they had five wins going into the bye, I'm not shocked. I'm just so, not. So like, by you my could, logic, you could have... hit this. You could hit their over three and a half by week five. Dude, so they could hit all. They could have six wins going. Northwestern, into the bye. Temple, Virginia Tech, Wagner, Michigan State, Indiana, all winnable games. That's six winnable games. It's pretty nice. They only. I, nice. They have no winnable games after the bye to me. No, I think you could make a case for November 25th. Maryland. Well, I, it depends on their season, I guess. A lot, lot can happen. The the big time rivalry game. All right. So even, 12, if, even uh, if we say six, yeah, I, I know you're making. Big a Ten joke is trying to force force feed R- us here. Rutgers Maryland. The such uh, a such a great historic. A, a one of the few protected rivalries of the Big Ten. So yeah, I guess we're all on the over here. It seems. Yeah. Well, and I'll say this. You know, in that second half of the schedule of Ohio State at home, at Iowa, at Penn State, Maryland at home, obviously pretty tough. But I think Maryland at home is a game they could win and. Man, I, I I like the Nittany Lions again this year, but they've had moments where they lose to teams they shouldn't lose in conference late in the season. Normally, and that's on the road though. Going yeah, into no, state I, college, so I, I'm with you. I'm just saying bye week, and then I I didn't actually say the teams: Ohio State at Iowa, at Penn State, Maryland. That's a brutal stretch. And, and yeah. sorry, one more point: they're playing Penn State after pl- Penn State had just played Michigan, so. Let down spot. Yeah, they, they are. They're also coming back from at Iowa, which is always no. A, it, yeah. And it's a back-to-back road spot, so that's going to be tricky. And, and I would say either like, way, though, over three and a half is very doable. Yeah, I, I actually think this is a pretty. Greg Schiano is the is, Greg Schiano is the college football Tom Thibodeau. <laughs> he creates a a nice baseline for your team. No where, ceiling. Where where you're not? Yeah, he. he no way they win seven games, but no. seems unlikely. They, Three is unlikely. They don't I win can make four. a case He's going to be in seven, that four to six. But they got to win all of their fifty fifty games. So yeah, between seven and four wins feels like the range for me, which means easy over. All right, next up we got Maryland, and oh, uh, Michigan State. Oh, so I'm sorry. Skipping over Michigan State, five and a half plus one twenty to the over, minus one forty five to the under, ninety five to one to win the conference. One twenty. That's crazy. They're two. Win- they have two more wins on Rutgers and Indiana, and they're still ninety five to one to win the conference. <laughs> well, one hundred twenty to one. Or sorry, you- division. One hundred twenty to one to win the conference. Three hundred to one to win the Natty. Uh, yeah, they're they're pumping money into the program. That's a good sign, right? Yeah. How are they do bringing back a ton. Uh, Leading receiver, running back, quarterback, and five offensive linemen. Well, the, or the, no, sorry, leading receiver is gone now, and, yeah. and and their quarterback is gone. Peyton Thorne, yeah. you're right, just got snatched up in the portal. And Keon Coleman went to Florida yeah. State. No, oh. so I, I, I would say they're actually kind of getting destroyed in the portal. But they did bring in a couple. They did bring in a couple guys that I kind of like, and maybe the, I hear they're going to be trying to Noah Kim. You got anything on Noah Kim, Colby? He came in and I think it was the Central Michigan game last year. When uh, when Peyton Thorne got knocked out, but he, I don't believe he's ever started a game in his career, so yeah. that's a little concerning. What about the defense? Defense last I, two seasons, 101st <laughs> and 111th in total defense. They don't uh, seem to be getting any better. Two years ago, they were 130th in pass defense. That so were, slight improvement. Yeah, yeah. So minus 110 yards per game in Big Ten play. I think I guess regression stuff. They did seemingly have some bad injury luck last year. Maybe that breaks I right think for the them. Defense could be better. I mean, he this is a year, defensive coach. I think coach. like the front seven is pretty. Looks pretty good. Um, He's literally a defensive coach that has the worst defense in the Big Ten. Big Ten. Yeah, well, and especially he's, what about he's their, a safety. What, he was a defensive backs coach too. So they've been. Th- what about their running backs? Do they have a Jalen Berger was a former yeah. five star, I believe, out of New Jersey, and they have Jaron Mangum transferring in from South Florida via Colorado. Um, it's like kids are going on their fucking like a concert yeah, tour. I, I, like get me a t-shirt with I all think these the O line is a little bit of a question mark. So the run game's been so good a couple of years ago when they had Kenneth Walker. I don't know. I'm not yeah, excited about have, the offense, to tell you the truth. Like the defense I think could actually be the the hardest. But heart you of this need team. that I don't know. At least Michigan State, I think like that formula that worked with Kenneth Walker was you need that workhorse back to make the quarterback job easy and to take pressure off your defense. It doesn't seem I mean, look, the line could be better than what I think, but it has to take a step forward. They got experience, some experienced guys there, but they weren't yeah. very good last year. Their experience at sucking. That's a hard problem with college. It's like sometimes these guys, it's like, oh, they have a bunch of starts together on the offensive line. They should be better than they were last year. But it's like, well, maybe that's just who they were, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, tr- tricky. The schedule is 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 tough too. I would say uh, the decent amount of road action on the back half of the schedule. Uh, you want to talk about the schedule? Yeah, let's Central Michigan, it. Chippewa. Watch chips. out! Watch out! Fire up chips. chips! Love my chips. Chips gonna be good this year. I think they're gonna be pretty good. Yeah, I, yeah. I uh, remember we all have. Uh, we have to st- remember this for the season. But our directional Michigan shirts. We need to start repping <laughs> repping the uh, the very. I forget who was central. I think I'm, I'm West, central. Michigan. I'm Western Michigan. I'm Eastern baby. <laughs> it's fourteen and Eastside. a half. Side. Fourteen uh, and a half points. Is that what the number is? I'll chips. take the points. I'll take the points. Chips, lap dogs, calling it. All right, and then uh, n- next up we got the Richmond oh, Spiders, sorry, FCS playoff team, but they lost a lot. They lost a lot from last year. So then we got Washington coming to the ta- to coming to town, which I you know as we are that, that's going to be a tough matchup for especially with the the pass uh, passing. Yeah, and then you got homecoming. Defense. Homecoming is Maryland. Interesting. Could have some tears coming out of that homecoming queen. This is gonna be a. I mean Maryland. It, could win that game. Oh, I think it's kind of, so. yeah. Yeah. I almost think that they're a little, you gotta I like mean, Maryland's win total more. seven and a half. <laughs> yeah. Mi- yeah. So compared uh, to Michigan state at five and a half. the, the number for Washington versus Michigan state's 11 right now. So just p- putting that in perspective, I, we don't have a Maryland number yet, but boy, I, I think they'll probably be like three and a half point favorites. Uh, then we have at Iowa, always a tough out uh, there. They're going to lose that into the bye yeah. week. Then at Rutgers, Michigan at home at Minnesota, Nebraska at home at Ohio state at Indiana, back to back road spot. And then Penn state at home. No, Ooh. it's not at home. This is, oh. this is that other oh. game Ford I'm Field. talking about. They lose a home game. Oh, fuck you, Big Ten! All they're, right, they're because, playing at the home of whatever, the Michigan whatever, Panthers. Whatever the uh, the the what is it? It's Peacock, I think it is. Yeah, it's Peacock. This is one of these fucking NBC. games that makes you want to vomit. You know what I mean? They're just trying to destroy. The, college did they football. get permission from the Michigan Panthers to play here? Uh, they did. They, yeah. Also, the the Philly Stars. Maybe Blob will be in the house. Yeah, Blob will definitely be there for this. All one. right, Blob. so Blob lives under so there under you, the bleachers. They have. Loser. T- they th- this team has uh th- they uh they only play two home games after their bye week Octo- so at after the month of September this is a great nugget for you when you when you're doing all the hits Colby you after, know uh, after the month of September only two home games for this Michigan State team under right so the, I mean t- uh, it's another one where what, boy what, what's that number uh, five and a half so. You're really going to need some work here. Let, so, uh, in the front half of the schedule, I think you can talk yourself into two to three wins, but even that feels like a bit of a stretch. See, the tough thing is Matt rules in year one at Nebraska, but they get him in November. I think he'll be a lot better in November than September. Um, That's one of the games they can win, though. I true, think. true. I think I mean, I, you I could see a path to six wins here. They could be, but they could be one and four before the bye. They Wait, really could. I guess. All, I mean, if they. If they nah, mess around nah, with uh, I, I so think two and beat three, Central Michigan and Richmond, two and yeah, three, but they then could be two and three. So two yeah. and three, I think, is the is what the are their most, coin flip games, Colby? How do they win four after the bye? The coin I don't flip see games, it. Maryland, are Maryland, Iowa, no, 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 I mean, in Iowa, no, Iowa, Iowa Ruck, at yeah. Rutgers, Iowa's a better I, version of Michigan State. At Rutgers, okay. you would favor Michigan State, but I'm on Rutgers, not by at much. Minnesota, Minnesota, and Nebraska. To me, like Minnesota, Maryland, Indiana. Maryland, 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 and Indiana. Yeah, those four all are going to so dictate here's, but the season. So they, but here's the issue: most of those games are on the road. True. So I, like, I, I would favor Minnesota. I would favor. Uh, well, no, I would not favor Indiana. But so if they get Indiana, if they get Nebraska at home, that's and two. And they get Rutgers. Three, and then you you beat two Richmond and Central Michigan. That's, that's five. five, and then the Maryland game is everything. The Maryland game is huge, um, but I'm going under. We just we did that was a good. I'll work. go under too, just because they just lost Peyton Thorne and Keon. That Coleman. was a great workshopping exercise. I, you know what it is? I think a lot of the a lot of the games of, against teams that they'll be they'll be equal to are on the road. And I think the yeah. numbers right though. I and feel like they're right there at five or six. Yeah, like they're not yeah. gonna they're not gonna go row the fucking boat up there in Minneapolis. Shout out to our guy, I think Mr. They, Fleck. Yeah, they have to get to get to six and six. I think they just gotta. It's too much on those 50 50 games. Hmm. And your point, Ryan, back that, to that's, my underways. No, that that's just a great nugget on the uh, not playing a bunch of home games past September. Two home games. No, they got uh, that's a bullshit blow to have to play Penn State now because Penn State, will, for the fans will travel. That's a huge yeah. stadium. Uh, that's if I'm Mel Tucker and, and the athletic director, I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, there's definitely going to yeah. be more Penn State fans there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Definitely. And, and one of your two home games after September is at home against Michigan. It's like, yeah, well, there'd definitely be, that'll be all Penn state fans. If the wheels start to fall off a little bit. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah. that's the problem. We always discuss this. And especially that could be a, if Penn state's close to maybe winning the big 10, or maybe if they're in the playoff mix, like that could yeah. be a huge game. Well, and I also think with, with the portal, you're going to have more of that baseball vibe where it's like, we always look at baseball before the year. Are they sell? Are they going to be selling? <laughs> Cause I think if, if a team's starting to go down and guys are like, well, fuck it. I'm out of here anyway. Yeah. That's a compounding problem. That's new to college football, Maryland, seven and a half here. We have the, uh, the second coming of two and on uh, this time he's doing it in the Northeast. Maybe a couple more eyes on him. Maybe he won't get benched in a national in, in, in a big moment. 135 to the over, minus 165 to the under, 40 to 1 to both win the division and the conference. Did I I'll have to double check that I didn't screw that up. That seems odd. 85 to 1 to make the playoff, 250 to 1 to win the national championship. They have all the Under Armour money, Colby. Is it finally time for them to start poking their head up and being a little bit of a menace here? They should be able to, man. The question is, can Loxley? Because, like, oh, what do we say? Yeah, oh, hold on. Where's the? And where? they, they, you know, you know, Kevin Sumlin's part Kevin of the staff. Sumlin is the OC. Oh my now, God. are we auto fading <laughs> Kevin Sumlin because he's teaming up with Mike Loxley, or this is, is Sumlin like a dream? Is Sumlin one of those guys where he sucks as a head coach, but okay as a coordinator? All right, guys, What's our real, official real rule? Quick, quick update Maybe. on the thou shall list: fade New Mexico State. Never lay points with Narduzzi. Fade <laughs> yeah. Sark. Fade Mike Loxley. The, number but that's four from on the years list. ago. New Mexico State, you should delete. Okay. Yeah. Updating the list. Yes. So Fade Loxley now number three on the list. There you go. There you go. Uh I well, don't know. I Well, you gotta love the non con because they're definitely gonna be three and oh. Yeah. It, in fact, I think uh there's no way they're not three and oh. They play Towson the Tigers. To open the season, they then have the the Charlotte 49ers, who of course we all remember CLTs naming naming their university after the year that it almost went under but didn't. You got the, the best. Then new, you play UVA, who football. is shout out to UVA for being worse than Virginia Tech during the all time <laughs> low point in the program. So there's at least a cushion there. Uh, the cat, the Cavaliers are looking to be one of the worst teams. You're in right, the, in though. The more I see this, the more I think that they're going to win at Michigan State because they don't even get tested. Yeah, yeah. Then, so it's a beautiful preseason for them. Then they go play Michigan State, oh, and, great and then they're back games. home against Indiana. I mean, those are five winnable games. Then you have they should be five and zero. Oh. Then at Ohio State, that's going to be a tough one. And then it's homecoming against Illinois, who mm. Bielema is going to that team's. Illinois is going to be, be six and one. Illinois is going to drag everyone into the yeah. deep water. Yeah, and it's going to be are, a rock fight. Yeah, not that's always going to be a tough game, but winnable. Again, I'll say so five and two. I would say that they have six winnable games. Set seven, no six winnable games. So yeah, I mean they're going to be favored right. in eight or nine games, assuming like if you did the look ahead lines right now, I think they'd be eight or nine games. They only play what three uh, ranked teams. Yeah, I don't see any Maryland lines out actually as we uh, speak right now. So, oh, is it another? Maybe Maryland's like Jersey. They don't. Oh, just keep it on the <laughs> keep it on the down low. They don't want. Well, they don't want people to fade Loxley too early. Um, then, then we have uh, coming off the bye. We have at Northwestern, which I th- uh, the last time they played there, I believe they lost by like thirty five or something. I, I I remember Northwestern might not be all that good though, right? True, uh, but I'm just saying, Pat Fitzgerald. Then you have Penn State at home yeah. at Nebraska. Again, Matt Rule first year, but get him in late, late in November. the season. Then you have Michigan at home at Rutgers to close it all out. All right, you got to get to eight wins. Seven and a half. You got to get to yeah. You got to get to eight wins. The so juice, you got four losses. You can. You the can juice use. is on the under, so people are coming mm. in on the under. I'm on the under. I so we said six winnable games early. So even if That's they win, if they win every single. Even one, if they though. win all six, um, they would need two down the stretch. Three of those are road <laughs> games. The home games are Penn state and Michigan. Again, we're looking at, uh, you know, do they have, they're going to have to win at Northwestern and at Nebraska, or uh, they're going to have to get yeah. two of these three, two of these three at Northwestern at Nebraska at Rutgers. Can they win two of those games? Cause that, I gave them six early and then I still need these two. This is an easy under I'm on the under two. unders are just so easy to fire on. 
<laughs> what are you doing there, Green? I don't know. I'm going back and forth here. Fade Loxley. It's in the manual. It's true. I do. We didn't talk about. They've lost four of their offensive line starters. Three of their that top won't matter. six receivers. But you got. Uh, I'll just call him Small Tua because I can't pronounce his name. They also brought in Tyrese Chambers from Florida International, who's a really mm, good one. The wide airport, yeah, yeah. Mm. Defense just all right, uh, yeah. It, it, I mean, if they go nine and three, he's worse. He's worse Tua. That's yeah, all we have. I'll to, go. I'll go under. That's all we have to say, right? I guess I'm not going to be shocked if they uh, win eight games. But yeah, I'm with you. Let's let's fade the Terps here. Go under seven and a half. Seven and five feels like. Not a bad number. Although I don't love Lane minus 165. Uh, you know what I do love though? Underdog fantasy. Have you signed up over at Underdog Fantasy? If you haven't, what are you waiting for? Love the best ball mania drafts. Kramer and I have been doing a ton. Uh, so fun. Again, the best part about fantasy football. You draft your teams, you never have to deal with it again. You don't have to deal with guys getting in fights about waiver wires or hey, did your uh did you collect from your cousin? You didn't Venmo you to the group. It's the worst part about fantasy football. Drafting is fun, and then that's all you got to do. Each week they play your best uh, team, and it's a giant competition. You have a chance to win. They're giving away fifteen million dollars in prizes, which is insane. Uh, there's a bunch of different versions of the games, and also like if you're getting ready for fantasy season, don't do a mock draft. Do like a three dollar best ball draft because people will take it serious. They also have uh, pick them. So again, daily MLB stuff, season long NFL pick them. Uh, over under for player props. I mean, you want to, you want to talk about some plus EV opportunity, fire up the underdog account, get the hundred percent deposit bonus up to $100 over at underdog fantasy and just fire on every under in the NFL player prop market. Someone's going to get injured. You're going to come out 60, 65%. There's a bunch of ways to win and play over at underdogfantasy.com and use that promo code S G P N got to introduce the round Robin over there. Oh yeah. Make sure we can get them all in there. All right. We've talked about the rest of the West, the East. Now we talk about the cream of the crop. There is a lot of opportunity, I think, for the Big Ten. We were discussing this uh, before the show. Multiple teams from the Big Ten in the playoff for the first time. Ever. Multiple teams in the Big Ten East in the playoffs? potentially. I, I I think we're looking at a situation where, you know, a lot of unders just came out of my mouth, and I, I think a lot of those wins get gobbled up here. Penn St- starting with Penn State, nine and a half is the number, minus one forty to the over. Plus 115 to the under, five to one for the division, six to one for the conference. Uh, The West really gets no respect. 440 to make the playoff, 20 to one to win the national championship. Penn State typically is right on the line when it comes to the blue chip ratio. I'd imagine they're they're probably they're probably like a gatekeeping type program when it comes to a roster that you like the basic roster that you need to compete for a national championship. The certain they're they're certainly gifted uh, a schedule I think this year that will allow them to do that and uh, like there are a lot of wins to be had with all of these teams at the top of the division so uh, Col- Colby the question generally with Penn State is like they're gonna play defense they're probably gonna be able to run the ball a little bit but Dog. do they have a quarterback uh, I mean there's a lot of hype around them you can't get worse. How about that? I mean, Clifford. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. how well, dare yeah. you? What do you mean? Will Levis got drafted in the second round of the <laughs> NFL draft, and yeah, Sean yeah, Clifford yeah. beat him out, so he's yeah. got to be good, right? Uh, questionable coaching there, but uh, <laughs> Singleton's a beast at running back. Same with Allen. Their running backs are awesome. Yeah, like, and then when you add in, you and know, their they off- do. offensive line, the the left tackle, they're expecting to be a first round pick. He stayed. Eight starters on offense. Yeah. He would have been starters a, on defense. He would have been a first rounder last yeah. year. Nil. Paying off. Actually, he would have been the top tackle in the class, I believe. So, so I mean, a lot of players stayed this past year. <clears throat> Good for him. Yeah, good for him. He's staying to get his degree and eat more of that delicious ice cream at the. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to talk yeah. about DP Doe, the calzone place. No, I was trying to avoid the the stuff we don't want to talk the about. The Sandusky hangout. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> come on, dude. Uh, talking about the Kramery. Nothing wrong with that. A little ice cream, <laughs> little soft serve ice cream. James Franklin, though, coming it, to my van. James Franklin has won eleven games. Uh, four different seasons since 2016 with this Penn State program. You toss out 2020 there, but they they to to Kramer's point, it does seem without a quarterback. Yeah, without <laughs> like I mean, who's their best quarterback in that run? McSorley. I, I probably I, uh, Sean Clifford last year might have been, been better. McSorley was an all time. McSorley McSorley, yeah. McSorley was a better play cre- like college quarterback. Plays. College quarterback. Yeah. yeah, he was better. 
He did. Agreed. I mean, he he created plays on with his legs. But that then game against Sam Darnold, Sean Clifford <laughs> looked good in the Rose Bowl, man. That, yeah, that was, did, but he didn't look good against Ohio State. He no, he didn't. Like he, he, he lost cost them that game. That game. Yeah. But again, I they finished the season strong. Nice win on the Rose Bowl. Feels like this program overall has some momentum. Should they be really be this far off, Michigan and Ohio State? No, but the Paterno thing set them back a little bit. They're getting back to where they should. No, be. I'm saying like in the odds, where there there are decidedly longer shots in the it futures market. It's only markets. one oh, one game oh, in the no. one game no. in the win total. This, their schedule's actually, I think, better than Michigan, the uh, better than Ohio State and Michigan. So, the reason why is their road games. Well, first off, the non-con is West Virginia, Delaware. Well, let's say, yeah, let's uh, yeah. West Virginia, Delaware um, to open the season. Which love love the fact that West Virginia rivalry's back. But West Virginia is one of the Play like, that every again year. Bo- a bottom twenty, uh, you know, a, a yeah. bottom ten their, their power coach five team. Probably gonna be fired this year. Yeah, yes. the West Virginia athletics is going through some shit right now. Uh, but then you have Delaware, which not are they still uh, they still playing well down there in the FCS? They are. They're, yeah, they're blue still heads. A FCS playoff team a year ago, but still, Ka-ka. come on, going into state college, no. Yeah, let's not forget Delaware is just runoff water from Philadelphia, so nothing to see there. Delco. That's that's why the hens are blue. At Illinois little again, sneaky. always going to be a rock slide when you when you go to Champaign. Sneaky. I think I think Illinois is going to be a fun team to watch every no, week. They are a thorn in the Big Ten. You side. know why? Because they're going to block yeah. well. They're going to tackle well. They're going to do the basic shit Smash that Joe mouth. Judge taught Brett Bielema how to coach <laughs> and his players. Lots of uh, get the hose out during the preseason. All right, and and, and uh, recover fumbles uh, all soaking wet. It's beautiful. Iowa, the Hawkeyes. They can beat Iowa, Dom. Of yeah. course, yeah. at Northwestern, I would say that the trap here is the Illinois game. Sure. Other than that, the schedule is great, though. Man. Other than that, they're this undefeated. is a delicious schedule. Yeah, like everything aligns, and and because yeah, they come out this. of the bye and they get UMass before Ohio State, so they get like a two week bye. Warm up. So then you get the bye, you get the yeah homecoming against UMass, who I don't think they project to to be anything special this year. Uh, looking ahead, of course, maybe we take the sixty-something points because they'll be looking ahead to Ohio State, big game there. Then you have Indiana at home, at Maryland, Michigan at home, Rutgers at Michigan State. Oh well, well, neutral field, but yeah. Oh, sorry, the the fourth. That's field what I'm saying. That fiasco. helped them so much because I actually thought before that was announced, I was like, oh man, day after Thanksgiving, they got to go to I, I, East Lansing. They're going to lose to me. It's, it's a simple formula. They split between Ohio state and Michigan and they lose one other game. They shouldn't lose yeah. They're 10 and two. Uh, I yeah. think they're going to go 11 and one. Probably. Yeah. I think, I, 11, mean, like, I think 11 and one too. Yeah. I think they beat Michigan lose to Ohio uh, state. You would have been 10 and two had they had to go to East Lansing. It's probably true. that I'm just is a I, huge change. I, yeah. I get nervous. Like they, They've had moments where they lose a game they shouldn't. This is the easiest schedule they've had in some time. I do delicious think, schedule. I do think we have a, a an opportunity for the Big Ten East to be a complete mess with like a three way tiebreaker that makes no sense to anyone because everyone's beating everyone else. Uh, part of that tiebreaker would obviously be Michigan, uh, Mr. Harbaugh, who was on my list. Fade Harbaugh. I didn't get there, but he was number. Currently number six on the left. Fade UMass. Very topical. My list. Though. Fade, fade Bowling Green. Fade UMass and Fade Harbaugh closes out the uh, list of things that you want to do in the college football world. Michigan ten and a half minus one twenty to the over one hundred to the under one twenty five to win the division and one eighty five to win the conference one thirty to get back to the college football playoff for a third straight year and ten to one to win the national championship. It almost feels like fool's gold at this point, but he is building something. Mr. Back to Harbaugh. back, uh, he's definitely, playoff appearances. He's definitely, win a game. definitely, definitely not looking at the NFL. Definitely not <laughs> looking at the NFL for a new job. Definitely not tired of Michigan. He definitely isn't getting itchy and has to move again because it seems like everywhere he goes, he burns all the relationships out because he's such a hard ass. I like Jim he has Harbaugh. To fucking I'm leave. a Harbaugh guy. Yeah, but he at some point it's you, not them. No, the, I think he did that as a ploy because their NIO collective was lagging. No, I'm just saying he's done that everywhere. And Mel Tucker made a lot more money than him, and still makes a lot more money than him. Well, which that's is kind of mind-boggling. Well, I mean, maybe he needs yeah. to get a rich owner in yeah. the Michigan alumni to, 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 to pony up. Yeah, I mean, since 2018, he's won double digits. At, well, actually, nine and four in 2019. Toss out 2020, but 13 and one last year, 12 and two year before. 
I mean, you got to love what's coming back on this team. And remember they canceled that home and home with UCLA. So, I mean, uh, they really bring, soft move. They bring back uh, McCarthy. They have Blake Corum, Donovan Edwards back Cornelius Johnson back at the wide yeah, spot. Steel did have a uh, Michigan minus five on the stock market index. Uh, as far as like signs of regression. Hmm. Well, we know they lose the opener because wow. they're 36 point favorites. And you know, who was the 36 point uh, favorite uh, oh, in the Michigan big was against app state. Ooh. Oh, and this year, where's app state from North, North Carolina? Carolina. Well, well, but your East Carolina is a different state, right? Uh, <laughs> they open against East Carolina, Sean. So we, now we're starting to understand where this is coming from. Colby with the heart off the top rope Yeah, I think with his ECU, pirates. So that's, that's the probably their only loss of the season. So right? they open the season against uh, Pirates, Rebels, Falcons, and Knights. Yeah. So they they, they at UNLV after yeah, that. that then Bowling, is... Wait, Bowling Green. I just read Fade Bowling yeah. Green. Uh, so that that should be an easy one. Uh, then they have Rutgers for homecoming at Nebraska at Minnesota. A back a, a sneaky. sneaky back to back sneaky game there. Getting Matt Rule early in the season probably good, but PJ Fleck, uh, you know, he likes yeah. to he roll likes to the roll. boat. Indiana and then at Michigan State. Look, the, you can really stretch and find and say, uh, you know, what, there's a loss there, but there's no losses there. That, uh, the Minnesota one, I think, is the one that would be the yeah, one. Look, like for, Fleck's always. Good at like upsetting a team. Three road games yeah. in four weeks. N nothing easy about that. But the road games are Nebraska, Minnesota. And, and you're not going to catch me sympathetic there because they they played right, their so first five games at home. You got them undefeated too. First four games at home. Uh, uh, maybe seven and one. Yeah. I, I think I think they lose a game. It's this the back four post bye. Yeah, so then they come off the bye, which great time to have your bye week. Then it's boiler maker time. Uh, and then at Penn State, at Maryland, Ohio State. That's a tough stretch. That's a tough I stretch. I think they drop the Penn State game. Yep. They and beat Ohio State. Yep. And they finish eleven and one. I agree. We, yeah. Eleven and what one. What was the win total? Ten and a half. Ten and a half. Yeah, I feel pretty good about this one. Like Penn State a lot more. I do have fade hard. Well, and, and you look at the you look at here? the division prices, and I guess we'll talk about it when we get to the futures. But Penn State five to one to win the um the, the division. Michigan State plus one twenty five. So crazy considering well, they're only one game difference. Well, in the and win I think, total. I think they're going to, I think Penn state will have the head to head tiebreaker. Cause I think I have them beating Michigan. Well, it's the games at home. So, all right. Last one, Ohio state, 10 and a half minus half, minus one fifteen to the over minus one Oh five to the under one Oh five to win the division one sixty five to win the conference one Oh five to get back or to get to the playoff and six to one to win the natty. We were Kind of talking about it, like how, I understand Ohio State. The roster is always loaded. I don't know if this roster is as loaded as some of the teams of, of past years. We do have Marvin Harrison Jr. Obviously, awesome. he's great, but new quarterback. They're gonna have to dust off, and uh, you know, again, we we have this kind of Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State trio they lost, situation. They lost Fourteen starters. Well, they do they do tend to reload like an SEC yeah. school, so that. Generally okay, but I my, my, the big question is like is, is the defensive line going to be locked up with with NFL draft picks, and it really is the quarterback going to be able to step in and just continue on what Justin Fields and C.J. Stroud have been doing the past couple of years. Uh, it's kind of a tall <laughs> order to be that good, but uh, I think he's still obviously really talented. But uh, feels like DJU at Clemson or at uh, yeah Clemson. Following ooh, uh, Lawrence ooh, and Watson. Ooh! Wow! Low blow to Kyle well, McCord. Do we, Colby, do we have a? What are we making a Kyle McCord? Uh, you know he's really talented. So I of mean, I, I would assume you know, and and we're making the assumption that he's going to be the starter over Brown, but I, I think that's probably going to come true. I think the um, odd, the Heisman odds believe uh, are starting to suggest that as well. I'll pull them up while you're talking. But um, yeah, I mean, this offense just got Trevion Henderson's a beast running back. The receivers are still as good as ever, um, so there's nothing to really fear fe uh, fear there except for when they play, uh, you know, Michigan or Penn State. But I, I would say the schedule's a little harder this year, so you worry about that. And then the defense wasn't great last year. The problem, no, that's there, what was and great. And the yeah. defense was the liability in their losses, Michigan and Georgia. I, I would mean, also say like their physicality. Yeah, they, they, they even, they've kind even, of turned into a finesse team with the passing game. Yeah, and 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 that Harbaugh smiles when he sees that. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? So uh, Dev, Devin Brown down to sixty to one to win the Heisman. McCord now twenty two to one. So it looks like what Colby's saying is is pretty accurate there. And to your point, who who was talking all the shit about uh, Ryan Day inheriting uh, like a rental like? Uh, no, the Harbaugh because Day called him out. That's right. Yeah. And then when Harbaugh be you know uh, he, he said it's it's you know. Uh, 
nice to be on third base, but you yes, just remember yes. you didn't hit the triple or something like that. Something like that. Something to the effect of that clip. Right? Yeah, you, you said getting, like I mean, we Harbaugh all about getting a third base with his recruits. So yeah, no, Ryan Day t- talking shit and and you know Great to some for extent, the rivalry. I I do I mean, has Ryan Day made Ohio State better? No. It it's pretty hilarious how Urban Meyer, this guy who colossally like he just completely fucked up the NFL job, is somehow this awesome college guy. Yeah. I mean, and it's just cuz he lets crime hang out, right? <laughs> crime pays. Yeah, so uh, do you want to walk through the schedule? Sure. Any other nuggets on Ohio State, Sean? Mm, no, I mean they lost both tackles to the NFL, but they shouldn't have. I, I mean, still, that's that's <clears throat> something. And to Colby's point, I mean, really, it's just can Kyle McCord step in and play at that high level of CJ Stroud? I mean, and, they were just they were living off their passing game, which is great, but it's and they have the hardest schedule out of the three. Like between Penn State, Michigan, and Ohio State, yep. I think hard, Ohio okay. State has by far the hardest out of those th- three schedules. Um, yeah, they're back half of the schedule, not not a cakewalk. All right, let's talk about it. At Indiana to open the season, Youngstown. After that, the Penguins. Then they got the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky, and at Notre Dame. Certainly, the Notre Dame game is one to kind of raise your eye at, but they have a, they have a lot of new yeah. too. Yeah, and I I think. You know, Ohio State probably sh- should be able to get that one done with talent alone. Early bye week, though, this was the red flag to me when I when I looked at Ohio State and was kind of like, eh, I'm not sure why. Again, Ohio State and Michigan were priced so much better than, uh, so much shorter than Penn State. So I got to imagine we all agree that they're probably undefeated here. Although that uh, they absolutely could trip up against Notre Dame. Sure. I mean, it's a game. Uh, I still think that, that, that they'll win this, but it, uh, if you don't take it seriously, you could lose that game. It happened to Clemson last year. Um, I, I think two years ago too, it happened to Clemson. So yes, it's a game you could lose, but I, I, I would be taking Ohio state. If you told me four, no, oh. I mean, do, we have a number. Do you, yeah. do you have it in front of you, Sean? Uh, Ohio state at Notre Dame, Ohio state is, uh, let's see. I got it right here. Ohio- let me, let me guess. All right. Nine and a half, close seven and a half. Okay, which I have teaser. That hook might bait me. No, yeah, I mean you, uh, I you have got teaser Hartman. protection built in. That's yeah. that's smart to put that teaser protection in there. Coming off the bye, you got Maryland. That's the homecoming. Then at Purdue, tricky. I think they might have. If, mem- if memory serves me correct, I think they might have lost the last time at Purdue. But Brom's gone, so maybe it's not as tricky as it, as it was. Penn State at home at Wisconsin at Rutgers. Interesting two game back to back road spot there later in the season. At Wisconsin, I think that's what you circle right at there. At Wisconsin is not a cakewalk. Well, especially Whoa. especially in this spot. Well, Penn State and then Wisconsin. Yeah, and, I guess that that run there. And Luke Fickle, they're going to the the the, the dairy raid offense. I actually um, think it's a step further. I think the you have, dairy raid. Is that you what heard about this? It? The dairy raid offense. I, I love yeah. this cold. Yeah, this is I excellent. knew they were going yeah. air raid. I didn't hear the uh, nickname. The for dairy it. raid offense. It's they're beautiful. calling it. And uh, but but listen to this. You go Penn State. You go at Wisconsin, and then you have this at Rutgers before your in-state rival, Michigan State. Potential letdown no, spot. They're, they're not in state with Michigan State. They're Ohio all Ohio State. State. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but dude, they fuck up Rutgers. Look at the scores of those Rutgers games. Yeah. They win by like a, the an average. You don't of like, like the Greg Schiano revenge spot? No. <laughs> not against Rutgers. Michigan State, Minnesota, and at Michigan. I think they lose. Minnesota to Michigan. game is a little tricky. See, well, I can find two losses here. I think easily. Yeah. I, I think I I'm fading Ohio State. This year. Look, I don't feel great about saying that they're going to go ten and two because I could see eleven and one, but I definitely think they're going to lose at Michigan, and then it's possible to lose to Penn State, Notre Dame, or Wisconsin, even Minnesota in a sneaky spot. I, I think if there were I I would I would kind of want to root for three eleven and one teams, but I do think Ohio State can trip up because I we are making such broad like. We are just making these crazy assumptions on these quarterbacks that are coming in with re- like very limited. I mean, it's basically like a Trey Lance situation, Sean. These guys have no <laughs> no track record, and sure they have they have all these weapons all around them. But real quick, Trey Lance nugget. Oh uh, no, Tom Brady last year threw more passes than Trey Lance has thrown in his, his entire life. professional career, college and high school. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> it's just an insane stat. It's fresh. <laughs> this this table cannot get big enough. We're, we're way too close to Sean with these hot takes. 
Yeah, I mean, I I really thought I was going to come in with an over on Ohio State too, because I would love eleven and still one. Still very possible. I don't feel great about my underplay, but uh, but to your uh, point, there are like I know we always talk about the winnable games when we're talking bad teams. There are if you want to if you want to be an optimistic hater, at Notre Dame. Penn State at Wisconsin at Michigan, all losable games, and I think Colby even mentioned a couple other look-ahead spots in there. The that Minnesota could be spot, but but I mean they also could beat all those. Things. Even the Michigan game, like I'm taking Michigan because of what's returning and the fact that it's at Michigan. Yeah, and they've that, been the rivalry game though. I mean that wouldn't shock. And, and maybe me. Ryan Day not a great. Maybe he's not the guy. Is this the first guy? Is this the first? Uh, how many years has Ryan Day been there now? Oh, a decent amount now. I think this is his third five, year. Four or five, maybe. No, this is. No, four. Urban Meyer was just yeah. What what day was that? That was or two years ago because because uh, Doug P was this his first year. Ryan Day. So was, this is third year coaching. No, but remember they they, they fired they he got suspended. Miller or uh, Urban Meyer did before oh, he took right, the Jacksonville right. job. He already had gotten. In this is year five. Oh, no, wow. year six in a way because he came in for three games in eighteen because he got suspended. Oh wow! So he's th- never yeah. yeah he had. I mean, again, throw out the COVID year, but other than that, he's won 11 or 13 games. Yeah, it's tough to say he should be fired, but <laughs> he's. I I definitely think Michigan. I would if I had to take, I would take Michigan to beat them this year. So that is tricky. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to take. He's 45 and six. People call him for his head. What a world I'm going we live under. In. I do like that hot seat. Hot seat. Hot right. seat. All right, time for the locks and our future pick brought to you by circusports.com. Go there, sign up for the contest, get involved. I was just looking back at our uh, last year picks, did pretty good. Kramer, what do you got? All right, well, I, I told you, I mean, I really seem to be locking these overs in a lot, but the Penn State one seemed pretty obvious. Uh, I, I thought about making maybe we, we save Penn State for the future, but that that one seemed pretty straightforward. As did the Maryland under. Mm. Um, oh, I like being a narrative based play, fade Loxley, but just as we went through that schedule, it seemed very daunting to get them to eight wins. So I'll, I'll lock up the Maryland under seven and a half. And for the future, I, it does seem like Michigan should run this back. And it does seem like I, I don't understand the world where Michigan wins the division and doesn't win the conference. And you see a gap between a division future of plus 125 and a conference future of plus 185. That's probably the way. But I think I have Penn State winning the. You know what? Give me the Penn State division, too. Yeah. Or Penn State conference. Sorry. I don't think I, whoever comes out of the West wins the conference. So I, I think you, if you're going to get an inflated price, take it. I, are you sure the number's right? Because you have Penn State college football playoff at plus four forty, but they're plus five hundred to win the division. Yeah, that, two teams from the. Yeah. I, I think two teams can make it. From we were discussing this. I think Michigan and Penn State could both make the playoff. I mean, yeah, you would need a little, you need a hell a little assist from the Big Twelve and the Pac twelve, but. Certainly the prob- possible. The problem probable, is the say. ACC. Well, in the ACC, you need some help there too. The problem is the ACC could have a a a, a, a highly ranked preseason uh, one loss team, and they might squeak in. For me, it's easy. Lock Rutgers over three and a half. I look back. One of my locks last year. Rutgers over three. They got to five yeah. wins. <laughs> it's just. It's not going to be pretty. a machine. <laughs> just go watch the Sopranos intro and and Rutgers football. You get beautiful. yourself a gun. I'll go. Uh, well, no, 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 Sean. Not on the, the stream, though. No, no, definitely. No. <laughs> Rush Shout out to my buddy, John ja Morant. Again, this is just a uh, this is a toy gun. Is ja- well, yeah, of course. All, all the all guns, the all the guns you especially. flex on live streams are toys. So, you're except the ones that are holstered <laughs> next to my body. Because you're a baby. All right, for my other lock. Come on, Sean. You being serious right now? Penn State over oh, nine and a half. They get to ten. This guy. And then give me. Uh, you can hit your Sean Homer play bingo square. I'm gonna go just Penn State to win the division at five to one. Why wouldn't you play the conference? You want to be different than me? I just. Who know are they this- gonna lose to? Wisconsin. Iowa. I, I just. It's easier to play the division in my mind. Um, it's not worth the extra hundred cents. 
Mm, mm. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the mechanical math while Colby's giving out his pick. To I mean, my, he took my picks. Rutgers over three and a half, Penn wow. State over nine and a half. But I will take. You've been copying. Sean I will a take lot. Penn State uh, for the conference. Breaking news: Colby's locks last year. Rutgers over, Penn State over. <laughs> really? All right, you guys bullied me into Penn did State they conference. Hit? Yeah, they, they both did. That's why they're called locks. Yeah. What do you think the price would be? Penn State versus Wisconsin in the conference championship, or whoever they play. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I don't know that. I mean, Wisconsin's going from complete, all right, so change in philosophy. Do you think? Do you think Penn State would be minus six hundred in that game? Probably not. I think Iowa though would be tricky. So if it's so, Sean, for the for the the for the mechanical price to not work out for you. They have to be laying greater than minus six hundred. All right, um, so you, you switch me to the you conference. Should, you should take the conference. Thank notes. you, Ryan. Yeah. That's the, honestly, it's, it's sometimes. I mean, they're treating us like assholes in the in the in the marketplace. With well, these that's prices. why we do the math for the people. All right, let's go. Thank you as always for tuning in. Join the auto download army. Tell a friend. Come on, we're trying to take down corporate gambling. Do we have parades? Uh, no, we hide in trees well, and hey, we'll take get, out the British. We'll get yeah, we're, we're yeah, exactly. I like that guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla warfare, and uh, it starts by you telling a friend. Come on, toss us a bone here. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. For the sports gambling podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Mm, what is a Nittany Lion anyway? Kramer, let it ride.